So today we are uh, discussing the seventh verse of Sri Shikshastakam. As we know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has left behind only eight instructions in the form of Shikshastakam. Shiksha means teachings and Ashtaka means eight. So these are the last few verses, in fact, last but one verse of Sri Shikshastakam. And these verses are progressively reaching towards the highest perfection of devotional service. So as we saw from the very beginning of Cheto Dharmana Marjanam uh, to this verse and the verse after this, uh, there are verses uh, 7 and 8. Both are describing about love for Krishna. So we can see how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instructions are covering the entire gamut of instructions required for one to attain the highest perfection state. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is demonstrating what is that state of highest perfection is. How does one see? How does one feel? Um, and that is being very clearly explained in this verse. So in this verse, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, stating as what he is feeling. So here he is saying, Yuga, Yuga means millennium, Yuga Itam, appearing like a great millennium. What is that is appearing like a great millennium? Nimishena, a small moment, a very tiny fraction of time is appearing like a great amount of time, like a millennium. In other place, Prabhupada also uses this word, Yuga Itam refers to like 12 years. So Prabhupada uh, is stating that a single moment is appearing to be so long. And why is that? We will come to know. And what further Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling? He is feeling the time is expanding like so uh, much. Instead of a one moment, he is feeling it is so long. And then he is also saying that Chakshusha, his eyes, from his eyes, what is happening? Tears are flowing. And how are they flowing? Like torrents of rain. There is a continuous flow of tears. And then further, he is seeing that Shunyayitam Jagat Sarvam. The Jagat, Jagat here Prabhupada transfer, translates as the world. So in other places, it could be translated as the entire material existence or the universe. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying that this entire universe is looking like void or empty. Now, why would someone feel like that? Um, the entire world we see is full of activities, is full of different people, different natures, different experiences, but someone is seeing uh, of, it is of no value or seeing it as nothing but empty. So, the reason for all these symptoms or this nature, this, this feelings that uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is experiencing, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is stating why this is happening. And the reason that is being demonstrated here uh, by uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that it is because of Virahayana Me. It's because of separation from whom? Govinda. Because of separation from Lord Govinda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling these great ecstatic symptoms, these transcendental ecstatic symptoms of f finding a single moment of time like a million of years. Or he's crying, his eyes are filled with tears, continuous te tears flowing like torrents of rain. And then he sees no value, he sees everything of no meaning, the entire existence, the entire world. He seems void because he is finding that there is, he is not able to meet, he is not able to see Lord Govinda. And therefore, out of this separation, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling these great ecstatic symptoms. Now, uh, Srila Prabhupada explains that these symptoms are the nature of love. So only in love, one uh, can feel such kind of experiences. Now, um, it is important to note that Gaudiya Vaishnavism uh, is a very special 
uh, mercy of uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, where the highest state or highest kind of relationship with the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, uh, that, that is love of Krishna, is very freely given. Now, uh, even in love of Krishna, there are different kinds. And uh, in the sense, there is two kinds of rasas. One is called vipralamba and one is called sambhog. So one is where one is feeling love for Krishna in separation. And the other kind of love is when one is meeting or one is um, close to Krishna. So here, the kind of love that is being discussed or been demonstrated is the kind of love in separation. So this is a very unique aspect. Now, uh, it is being mentioned that the love of separation or vipralamba rasa is said to be even more intense because of the devotee uh, who is constantly, intensely desiring, thinking and feeling the separation of the Lord not able to tolerate, the devotee is continuously meditating, uh, intensely remembering, intensely feeling the separation. So the intensity of love, it seems to even increase further. And in this regard, Srila Prabhupada also gives another example of Lord Rama and Sita. So one may wonder as why Lord Rama, who is all powerful, why didn't he protect Sita? So Prabhupada says, so uh, there is also an increase in love when there is separation. So the Lord also wants to enjoy that rasa of vipralamba because that is even more relishing, that even more intensifies the love. And therefore Prabhupada says, the so-called separation is also a lila, or the pastime of the Lord, so as to increase his uh, love, exchange between the devotee and Mother Sita and Lord Rama. So this is a very unique aspect of devotion that is being demonstrated. Uh, similarly, Srila Prabhupada gives another example, uh, that of uh, gopis. When Lord Krishna was leaving to Vrindavan, the gopis were exhibiting very similar uh, symptoms. They were feeling uh, uh, great separation, seeing that the Lord is traveling to Mathura. And seeing this, they were crying profusely. And they were thinking, <coughs> How will we lead our life? But Prabhupada also writes there that because of their con constant absorption in this deep meditation and thinking that Krishna is, is far away, is far away, they are they're searching more eagerly for Krishna. They are becoming more and more intensely uh, desirous. When will we see Krishna? When, when, when can we meet Krishna? When can we talk about him? So they are uh, constantly remembering the past activities and further they're intensely desiring for seeing Krishna again. So these are some of the examples Srila Prabhupada gives uh, about how uh, the love in separation is even more intense. So this is uh, some sort of an overview of this verse. Now we will try to look few aspects of this verse today and see so these are the two previous verses that we saw. And uh, starting from verse 6, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing some very important quality. For example, this verse 6 is telling us that Tava Nama Grahane Bhavishyati. So when I chant the holy name of the Lord, when some of these symptoms will appear? What are those symptoms? That tears glide through my uh, 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 through my eyes, when my eyes will be uh, filled with tears, vadanam gadgada rudyagira, when my voice will falter, and when will my hair stand? So these are all ecstatic symptoms that appear when one can when one chants the holy name offenselessly. Now, similarly expanded to that is this verse where those symptoms are even more 
uh, intensified. So there is a gradual progression in the intensity of devotion, in the intensity of the relationship uh, between the devotee and the Supreme Lord. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining those with the, uh, certain symptoms where earlier there was just tears flowing. Now there are torrents of uh, rain. Tears are flowing like that. And so this is a further intensification of the symptoms of love for Krishna. Now, it is very important to note that these symptoms are possible simply by chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That's why in the previous verse, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, when will these things happen as I chant your holy name? So simply by chanting, one can raise one's consciousness to the state of love for Krishna. So that is being said here. Now, and this is the prayer of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu before. So the first thing to note in this verse is that Govinda Virahena Me. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu earlier addressed Krishna as Ai Nanda Tanuja, Nanda Tanuja. O Lord, uh, o, o Lord, O Son of Nand, Nanda Maharaj. Here Krishna is directly addressing, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is directly addressing Krishna as Govinda. Now, uh, what does the word Govinda mean? So Prabhupada explains, um, if Krishna is satisfied, your senses will be satisfied automatically. Therefore, his name is Govinda. So this is one simple ex explanation Prabhupada gives that if Krishna's senses are satisfied or Krishna is satisfied, then our senses are automatically satisfied. And hence his name is Govinda. Prabhupada elaborates that in another place where he states that go can mean either cows or it could mean land or it could mean senses. So in these three features, Krishna can be applied. He gives pleasure to the senses, therefore he is Govinda. He is very kind to the cows, therefore he is Govinda. He is the proprietor of all land, therefore he is Govinda. So in this way, Govinda means the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, Lord, as we have seen, has different names by his qualities and by his actions. So this is one quality of the Lord that he is very, very kind to cows. And uh, he is the proprietor of all land. And he is the one who uh, gives pleasure to the senses. So this is another very uh, beautiful name, Govinda. And I think uh, ISKCON devotees can remember Govinda more often because of the beautiful, uh, wonderful restaurants uh, uh, the Prabhupada has established, the Govindas. Throughout the world, devotees like to go and have prasadam and uh, satisfy their senses by taking delicious prasadam. So uh, this uh, is the first important word that if we satisfy Krishna, then our senses will be satisfied. Especially, I was talking to someone today, and because of lockdown, people are unable to balance their life. And being driven by the modes of ignorance and passion, the senses are getting very agitated. And they are unsatisfied, they are moving from here and there. So no one knows where to find satisfaction for the senses. No one knows how one can find satisfaction for the senses. But here it is being said, if we simply satisfy Krishna, then our senses will be satisfied. They will not agitate us. This is very important to note because the senses are always agitating. The only way to control them is when we take shelter of Govinda. So this is one important point to keep in mind. And then now the question uh, may arise that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling this intense separation. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling this intense uh, love for Krishna. What about us? Can we feel? Can we also uh, see that kind of a state? Uh, so it is mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela that Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Kare Udaya so it is being said that Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. 
So this eternal uh, love for Krishna is eternally established within our hearts. In fact, within the heart of every living entity, the pure love of Krishna is established. So it is not something to be gained from other source. Sadhya kabunai, to be gained, nai, not from other source. But why, why is that we are not having? So as we saw, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Ainanda Tanuja Kinkaram Patitam Maam Vishame Bhavambhadav For some reason I have fallen into this material world. Now I am seeing a separation from Krishna, but because of my ignorance, I do not even see that I am separated from Krishna. How then can we again awakened? How that consciousness, that Shuddha Chitte can happen? Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Kare Udaya when the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, this love naturally awakens. So here it is being mentioned that Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte. So only by the purification of the heart, again, because it is already present in our heart. Love for Krishna is already existing, but now it is covered. It needs to be reawakened. It needs to be awakened. And how that can happen? That it can happen by chanting and hearing. And simply by doing this, it is said, naturally awakens. So Prabhupada is writing here that this love naturally awakens. So although we have discussed this multiple times, it is very important to note this point that the nature of Krishna being absolute, being transcendental to our material senses, he cannot be understood by any other process apart from devotional service. So, Atha Shri Krishna Namadi Na Bhavet Grahyam Indriyai Sevan Mukehi Jivvado Swayam Svarati Evadaha so, so, Krishna, who is beyond our grasp of our senses, Adrokshaja, so who is imperceptible, 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 imperceptible to our senses, whom we cannot capture by our senses, but he can be captured by devotion. So only by bhakti, that by devotional service. So what are the nine kinds of devotional services recommended? It starts with Shravanam, Shravanam Kirtanam. So when we attentively hear about Krishna, that's when, uh, as we saw that uh, Punya Shravana Kirtana. So Punya Shravana Kirtana. So when we hear about this Krishna Katha, then Krishna who is present within our heart, he will cleanse the dirt for material desire. He will reveal himself. Radami Buddhi Yogam Tam. He will give us intelligence as how we should approach him, how we can intensify our desire to serve him, and how we can actually go towards him. So one important principle that is without the mercy of Guru and Krishna, without the mercy of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Sri Krishna, we cannot understand him. And only way we can understand him is when we serve. And serving means first hearing. Only when we hear, who is that Supreme Personality of Godhead? What is his nature? How does he look? What are his qualities? When, as we gradually hear, Prabhupada writes in another place that just like when you see, when you hear from someone that there is a beautiful place up north with beautiful mountains, with beautiful flowers, beautiful trees, and a beautiful restaurant, and you can come and stay there for some days, then naturally the desire awakens in our heart to think, can I go there someday? Can I stay there for some day? How do I go there? So because the moment that desire comes, oh, there is a beautiful place, then naturally the desire slowly starts to plan, to contemplate, to think, how can I go there? What do I need to do there? So we start planning. And then we start working on that. So similarly, Srila Prabhupada states that only when we start hearing more and more about Krishna, more and more if we develop this desire to hear about Krishna, then naturally our attraction, which is right now is dormant, awakens. Because Krishna means all attractive. And 
his uh, Madana Mohana. He's even attracted to the Cupid. So he is so attractive that he will definitely enamor us. But for that to happen, we have to hear about him. So this hearing process is very, very important. And that's why Srila Prabhupada said uh, in another place to a devotee, do not try to be a Paramahamsa. I am also giving class every day. I'm also participating in Krishna Katha and Kirtana. Why are you not participating? Uh, you must hear in the morning and evening. So Prabhupada was uh, demonstrating uh, the importance of hearing. And we can see today all over the world, uh, in any temple of ISKCON, every day morning there is Srimad Bhagavatam class. So there is uh, Shravanam and Kirtanam. So Prabhupada always emphasized that these two pillars are very, very important at any stage of life. Prabhupada um, repeatedly said, at any stage of devotional life, one has to uh, do these two activities. And in fact, Prabhupada says, as one progresses, one intensifies these two activities. That is one of the symptoms. That the intense desire to hear and intense desire to chant. And by doing these two things, naturally, what happens in the beginning stages, we all do devotional service by rules and regulations. So the Vaidhi Bhakti or the Sadhana Bhakti is where one has to be forced upon with certain rules and regulations to do some service for Krishna. And at a later stage, when one further develops, uh, when one's consciousness is further purified, he gets spontaneous, uh, he spontaneously renders service. He doesn't have to be forced by rules and regulation. So Prabhupada says, this is, can happen only when one hears. Prabhupada says, only when one hears, one's tendency or one's inclination to take austerities will increase. So once Prabhupada saw devotees were only working and they were not doing uh, sufficient hearing and chanting. So Prabhupada said, this will not sustain. You will not be able to do services if you continue this way without following Shravanam and Kirtanam. So only when you continue hearing that consciousness of doing for Krishna, the consciousness of taking further austerities, the consciousness of cleansing our consciousness, uh, uh, the desire to please Krishna and not to please one's own self in the name of devotion can come when we constantly hear. And only by constant hearing, the Kirtana will be intensified. So if Kirtana has to be intensified, the Shravanam has to be intensified. So uh, hearing is very, very important. Uh, and uh, we have been uh, hearing about hearing again and again, but it is good to hear and hear again and again about hearing. Because only by that repeated hearing, uh, our desire and our inclination to chant will increase and that will naturally awaken to our pure state of consciousness. So I've just taken a few quotes of Prabhupada about hearing. So Prabhupada writes, the living entity, if he submits to this hearing process, will lose his long cherished desire to dominate material nature. And gradually and proportionately, as he reduces his long desire to dominate, he comes to enjoy spiritual happiness. So as we saw that the boatman who was trying to row the other day, when the boat is tied to the anchor, he is not able to make further progress. So we need to unwind or remove that uh, rope from the anchor. So the anchor for all of us is material attachment, the tendency to dominate the material nature. And Prabhupada is saying, if one submits to this hearing process, so this hearing process is so important that our desires change. Our desires of uh, material enjoyment, dhanam, sundarim, kavitamva, janam, all this will proportionately reduce as we start hearing. Our desires change. And then when he comes to enjoy spiritual happiness. So these are both opposite directions. If one is uh, trying to control material nature, he loses the ability to enjoy spiritual happiness. So the submitting to hearing process is a very, very important step in spiritual life. Then 
Prabhupada writes in Srimad Bhagavatam, one of, one of the lectures in Prabhupada gave in London, uh, Prabhupada writes, the result is by hearing, 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 one day you will be able to conquer over the unconquerable <coughs> Krishna. Krishna is unconquerable, but nobody can conquer him. But you here, you will be able to conquer him simply by hearing about him. Therefore, this hearing process is so important from the right source. So Prabhupada is making two important points. One is hearing from the right source. This knowledge, Tadvignanartham, Saguru Meva Bhikachet. So Tadvignanartham, so to understand the transcendental science, the process is to hear from the right source. If one simply hears, uh, just like Prabhupada, when he met his spiritual master, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, in Radha Kund, and when, we, when he was hearing from him, uh, Srila Prabhupada writes uh, that he could get the glimpse of spiritual world simply by hearing from his spiritual master about Krishna and the transcendental activities of Lord Krishna. So this uh, process of hearing with attention, rapt attention, is such an important process that if one does it sincerely, Krishna who is present within the heart, he reveals himself. He uh, gives that knowledge of the things which are beyond our senses. What, who am I? What is uh, the goal of life? Why am I here? Who is Krishna? What is devotional service? So all these things will become clear if we, st if we hear from the right source. And uh, the tendency to hear from unauthorized sources, uh, Sanatana Goswami especially uh, says that is very, very detrimental for uh, spiritual progress. So we must be very, very careful. Even as devotees, uh, we have to be careful from whom we hear. So as we know, there are different kinds of devotional service. So there is devotional service, the purest, pure form, Jnana, Karma, Mishra, Bhakti, and there are different Mishra Bhaktis which are present. But when we hear from a bona fide source, so Prabhupada in another place states that uh, one must take uh, in the age of Kali Yuga, it is very difficult for one to obtain self-realization. But one must follow the footsteps of sages of Naimisharanya who took Sutta Goswami as their leader and who took the favorable message of Srimad Bhagavatam as the uh, way to conquer over the age of Kali. And, and they did this by hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada says that similarly, one must take a bona fide spiritual master and one must hear from him uh, in the right way. Uh, if that is done, then Prabhupada is writing here, hearing, 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 one day you will be able to conquer or the unconquerable. Ajita, Krishna is unconquerable. But Prabhupada is saying by hearing. So Prabhupada is using interesting this word hearing three times here in this lecture. He is repeatedly saying hearing, 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 you will be able to conquer over the unconquerable. So uh, the tongue is the most uncontrollable uh, sense. Uh, but as we see that ears are active even when we are asleep. But the ears are if it's simply some or the other push uh, Krishna Katha into our ears, then this tongue will also become easily conquerable. And with the tongue, when we uh, chant, and then again hear, in this way, we can develop the intense uh, rati or attachment for Krishna. And then in another place, uh, Prabhupada writes, so this is uh, a letter to a devotee Stephen Knapp. Uh, so Prabhupada writes, so to develop attraction for Krishna is not difficult. You simply have to hear about Krishna, his activities, his name, his form, and his teaching in Bhagavad Gita. Naturally, you will develop love for Krishna because we are all part and parcel of Krishna. So again, uh, Prabhupada is stating that attraction or rati for Krishna it's not difficult if you simply uh, hear about Krishna, his activities, his name, his form, and his teaching in Bhagavad Gita. 
So actually, uh, although it looks sometimes very simple, we may miss this understanding that if we simply observe our mind and our energy and activity in hearing and chanting, uh, we can touch the transcendental supreme personality of God Shri Krishna. So this process of hearing and chanting uh, is very, very important. So although we are talking about the highest stages of love of Krishna, Prabhupada states that uh, one should not imitate what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, feeling here by artificial sentiments or artificial emotions. Rather, Prabhupada states that if one follows the regulative principles and chants Hare Krishna mantra, and if one desires to come to such a stage, he can come. And Prabhupada further uh, so states that one, intense, one important qualification is the intense desire. So let me state this verse before I go to the two stories that I wanted to explain. So this is a very beautiful verse uh, composed by Sri Rupa Goswami. He writes, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi Kriyatam Yadi Kuto Api Labhyate Tatra Laulyam Api Mulyam Ekalam Janma Koti Sukrite Nalabhyate. So Rupa Goswami is saying that Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi. So when the intelligence or the consciousness is fully absorbed in the mellows of devotional service to Krishna. So Bhakti Rasa is very, very sweet, very, very nectarian. So Bhavita is fully absorbed. So when one's consciousness or intelligence is completely absorbed in Krishna consciousness or devotional service to Krishna, if Kriyatam Yadi Kuto Api Labhyate, if it is to be purchased, if it is available somewhere, let that be purchased. And Tatra Laulyam Api Mulyam Ekalam. So if there is a price that has one has to pay, what is that price one has to pay? There is one price called Laulyam. This greed, intense greed to obtain it is the price. If one wants this, um, the if one wants to absorb oneself in the intense love for Krishna or one's consciousness in pure devotional service, the price is intense greed to obtain this. And it is said that, but there is one criteria that it is being said here that Janma Koti Sukrite Nalabhyate. It cannot be obtained even by pious activities in hundreds and thousands of lives. So although there is only one simple price of intense greed, intense eagerness, uh, it may take millions of millions of years, millions of millions of lifetimes. That many pious activities are required for one to acquire this price. But uh, Prabhupada also states that by the mercy of the spiritual master, by following the orders of the spiritual master, one can even obtain within one lifetime. If one is sincere and eager to follow the instructions of the spiritual master, bona fide spiritual master, he can develop this intense greed. So this greed or the intense desire is a very important characteristic. Just like we are talking about hearing, there is also a a, a, a quality to it, a quality of intense desire, a quality of intense desire to hear and chant, to know about Krishna. These are further intensified. Everyone is chanting or everyone is hearing, but we may see not everyone is making the same progress because the intensity to know Krishna, intensity to serve Krishna, intensity to observe one's energies, mind, intellect, um, everything, a senses in the service of Krishna is not same, is not done with the same intensity. And therefore, 
one is not making same progress. But if one is sincere and serious to get pure devotional service, one has to develop this great desire. This desire or the intense uh, eagerness to know Krishna, to serve Krishna uh, is very, very important. And that's why Prahlad Maharaj says in one place, I want to develop, if there is one prayer that I want to do, I want to become a very sincere servant of my spiritual master. Because of his mercy, I received this knowledge. So, so in a similar way, if one intensely serves the spiritual master and pleases him, then he makes very, very rapid progress. So the mercy of the spiritual master is a very significant factor for one to make further advancement uh, more easily. Without the mercy, it is not possible to make rapid advancement and get realizations. So even to realize Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it's not very easy. Without the mercy, the covering doesn't go away. Even a simple, although we all hear holy name and Krishna are non different, but to, for that to become a realization, Krishna and Guru are watching our sincerity, our seriousness. So when we follow the sadhana bhakti sincerely and seriously, then by their mercy, the, it will be revealed within our hearts. So uh, just to explain that, there are two beautiful stories in this regard of how intense desire uh, led uh, one to see Krishna. So there is this beautiful story of a thief who saw Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada uh, was so uh, amazing in terms of explaining uh, simple concepts by wonderful stories or wonderful analogies so that it becomes easy for us to appreciate the uh, simple fundamental concepts of Krishna consciousness. So just to explain uh, the intense desire and uh, eagerness, how that can help one see Krishna, Prabhupada gives this example of a thief who sees Krishna. So Prabhupada states that once uh, there was a thief who was attending a Bhagavatam uh, class. So he was actually hearing uh, a public recitation of Bhagavatam by a professional reciter. And this professional reciter was explaining uh, and describing about Krishna as how beautiful he is, how he is decorated with beautiful jewels, and how he goes to forest to tend the cows. And uh, in this way, the, the, uh, the reciter was describing uh, the beautiful uh, features of Lord Krishna and the beautiful ornaments that he's wearing. And uh, when the thief heard this, he thought, if I go and meet Krishna, and if I take away all the jewels of this young boy, because he's young, so it's easy to steal. Um, as soon as I steal, at once I can become so rich. So then uh, I don't have to worry about stealing smaller things here and there. So with this intention, uh, with this intention, he thought, okay, let me go to Vrindavan where Krishna is present. Let me go and find this boy and let me uh, at once steal one person, one young boy and become a millionaire. So this thief, all along his journey, he was just meditating on this one thing, I must see Krishna. I must see Krishna. And he was anxious with only this eagerness, he was traveling all the way from the place where he was to Vrindavan. And uh, actually, as he goes to Vrindavan, he sees Krishna. And uh, as he heard from the Bhagavatam reciter, he could see Krishna uh, in a similar way. And then uh, the thief goes and meets Krishna and he says, oh, you are such a nice boy, Krishna. So he begins to interact with Krishna to uh, flatter him, to impress him and thereby slowly steal uh, the ornaments. And then he started to say, after a little bit of flattering, he, he began to say, can I take your ornaments? But uh, Krishna said, no, 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 no. My mother will become very angry. I cannot give them away. So Krishna was also playing like a child. In this way, when um, the discussion was going on, the thief was uh, becoming more and more eager uh, to for to take the jewels but 
simply by being the association of Krishna, he became purified. And uh, Krishna also said, okay, now you can take them. But because of the association of the Supreme Lord himself, the thief became immediately a devotee and he became purified. So uh, Prabhupada states that this simple eagerness of this thief, where is Krishna, where is Krishna, where is Krishna? How does he look? I must see Krishna, I must see Krishna. With this simple eagerness, he could attain Krishna. So this eagerness is very, very important. And as mentioned earlier, Prabhupada says, hearing, hearing, hearing about Krishna will intensify our desire. And our test is also to see how much are we developing the intensity to hear. And the second pastime that I wanted to share was of this beautiful story of Bilva Mangal Thakur. So Bilva Mangal Thakur uh, was a South Indian Brahmin. And before he became a great devotee, uh, he was uh, very rich and he was attached to a prostitute. And he was so attached to a prostitute that he was very sensuous and he was every day meeting this prostitute. And one day it so happened that uh, his father passed away and he was uh, performing the Shraddha ceremony for his father. And he was so impatient that he wanted to go quickly from that place and meet the prostitute. He didn't want to waste the time even for the Shraddha ceremony of his father. And he was uh, making them, the Panditas, to hurry up so that he can go faster. So some or the other, he finished the ceremony and then he started going back to the prostitute's place. But during the uh, by the time he left from that place, uh, it started to rain heavily. And usually he has to cross a river uh, and meet her on the other side of the river. But on this occasion, because it was late and was raining so heavily, there was no boat for him to go on the other side. But he was so desirous to meet her that he didn't even bother to swim across the river, which was overflowing with water. Even though it was raining heavily, he didn't bother anything. He just went and he tried to cross the river and he crossed the river. Then uh, the prostitute, thinking that it's already so late and it's raining so heavily, she thought Bilva Mangal Thakur will not come. So she closed the door and she even blocked the way for which, by which he can go uh, to her place. But Bilo Mangal Thakur, who reached there, could see that everything is blocked. But then still he saw that there is a way to climb to the window. And in that process, he even caught a snake kind of thing and he went to the room and knocked and made the prostitute open the door. And you can see the intense desire of the Bilo Mangal Thakur to meet uh, this prostitute made the prostitute become so perplexed. She said that if you had the same desire to see Krishna, you could achieve the perfection of life. Simply by hearing these words, it stuck Bilva Mangal Thakur. It stuck him so deeply that he realized, what am I doing with my life? What am I trying to search after? And then he immediately leaves that place and he starts going to Vrindavan. As we know, again he encounters another um, similar activity and he pierces his eyes. And then he engages completely in the bhajana of Krishna. So this intense desire is uh, the key factor. So just like we have intense desire for different things and Prabhupada states, that uh, basically everyone is worried about the necessities of material life, of the body. But one does not recognize the necessities of the soul. The necessity, necessity of soul is very, very important and that is can be fulfilled only by devotional service to Supreme Lord Krishna. And this understanding 
uh, and this desire, as we see, we saw read in one of the Parupar, not in this, I think it's in another place it's written, Prabhupada says, if you read my books, this desire for material necessities will go away. The hankering for extra material necessities, unwanted material necessities, and lauding over this material tendency will go away, and the desire for spiritual progress will naturally come in the heart of a person. So Prabhupada uh, also states that um, the real necessity of life is actually devotional service only. So we need to distinguish what is the real necessity. If we do not distinguish the necessity, we are putting our desires in multiple places and we are losing time, we are losing energy. And in that way, our intensity of service, intensity of desire will not come. So uh, it is important that uh, we should pray and we should sincerely try to follow the footsteps of previous Acharyas, the instruction given by the Acharyas. And in this way, if we develop the greed uh, by following the regulatory principles and chanting sincerely, then we can go to the next stage of Raganuga Bhakti or the spontaneous Bhakti. So if we build every day uh, our uh, Shuddha Chitte by Shravanadi, by intensely engaging in devotional service. So practical devotional service is a very, very important aspect uh, to further intensify our devotion. So Prabhupada says that one must engage this, if one is very strongly desiring to serve Krishna and engages his energies, this is very important. It's not theoretical. It's not just, uh, I will just theoretically see everything. No. Prabhupada says practical devotional service is the means to understand the scriptures. And Prabhupada quotes his spiritual master who says that if you do not render practical devotional service, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness will be like licking the honey jar from outside. So if one wants to relish, if one wants to appreciate and realize the subject of Krishna consciousness, Engaging one's uh, energies and time in Krishna service is very, very important. Because uh, we may chant for two, two hours and we may uh, hear or read for some time, but then the rest of the hours, if we do not engage for service of Krishna, if we do not utilize our intellect, our mind in thinking, in our senses, in serving Krishna, then they will uh, loiter here and there and drag us down back to material life. So one side we are doing some positive work, but the other side we are being pulled down. But if we uh, make a program where we always think of Krishna and think how to serve of Krishna, and especially the holy name and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the age of Kali Yuga, then by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, our intense desire to serve Krishna can uh, awaken in our hearts and uh, Prabhupada says by that way one can feel the uh, same emotion that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling in this. So in short uh, Krishna Prema is present in everyone's heart and one needs to uh, develop this strong desire to get this love for Krishna. It is already present in our heart and that the process for that is repeated hearing, uh, chanting, and practical devotional service under the guidance of the pure devotees and his representatives. If this is done day in, day out, uh, with sincerity and seriousness, then the pure consciousness should emerge. Otherwise, there is something which we are not doing properly. So with that, I'll stop and see if there are any questions or comments. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, I, I have only one question. Like, even though uh, that uh, thief, right, uh, whatever story you told, like uh, past time, from the past time, uh, the thief, uh, thief's intention was uh, not at all good. He just wanted to steal all the ornaments, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, even though Lord uh, purified uh, his heart and 
be changed completely so mm-hmm. i mean to ask me uh, it was because his intention was uh, not that good right he lord would have punished him but even though he like purified uh, in such a way that uh, like it's a completely uh, different right mhm what's your question yeah i mean uh, that's what uh, if we as you as you said like uh, if we follow properly yeah if we were, our intention even though our intention is uh, bad like if we follow uh, spiritual practice properly uh, lord will purify us right yes so it is not that we intentionally choose to have a different intention or desire uh, but it is as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is very merciful already we have very different desires so in some sense we are not very different from the thieves because we are also looking something else from the lord uh well, he was looking for the ornaments which are directly visible we are asking for something else some other uh, material desires so but by coming in touch with holy name uh which is non different from krishna our heart will get purified when we hear the transcendental words as yesterday prabhu was mentioning that the words emanating from the pure devotee are touched with the saffron Uh, particles emanating from the lotus feet of the supreme personality of god shri krishna so they have those put, they are special words they are transcendental words so the words of a pure devotee the books these are transcendental beyond what we can see as normal text normal words there is a transcendental potency in it which can transform us our desires and intentions so uh, associating more and more with uh, the words of a pure devotee hearing reading and chanting that will cleanse us like just like uh, lord was very merciful in cleansing the thief we also can be cleansed in the similar way does it help uh, yes prabhu ji thank you it is more important for all of us to actually think for ourselves most often we think about others in the sense in the context of others but all of us gradually have to or at least we should start thinking from our own context as how one can move forward or uh, because these are various past times so sometimes we may think they got an uh, some concession can i also get some concession but uh, for us uh, more important is to see uh, how we look ourselves as a thief where we also do not actually do things the way they are supposed to be done and how we can uh, what we should do to purify ourselves uh we have a small video to play uh before if there are any other questions
Hope you could get it. Hope you could all get a glimpse to the week ahead. Uh, thank you very much for joining today, and please do join for the rest of the week. And um, can I request all of you to come in front of the camera? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. Thank you all for joining. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yes. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yes. I got Pramanande. Hari Hari. Hari Bol.